Hello, my name is Steve Regan and I'm going to do, be doing a series of videos that I'm titling Roman Fort Backyard Astrophotography. Now I'm going to take you from my humble beginnings as a amateur uh, astronomer who knew nothing and uh, my journey through to becoming a uh, astrophotographer who knows nothing. But I hope that Basically, I can show you some of the equipment that I've used and then um, how I'm advancing through cameras and various pieces of technology in order to get better. So I started off um, interested in the night sky. Um, I was in the Middle East looking at the stars and I wanted and I also did some in my uh, primary school. Um, looking through what we call refractor telescopes, ones that you just like a tube that you look through um, on a tripod. Um, they were very sort of low powered then, but you could see the moon, um, although it quickly, as you find out because of the rotation of the Earth, um, jumps out of sight. So you keep having to track it, uh, so you need a decent mount to do that. But nowadays things have got a lot easier and better, um, but it's not a cheap hobby. So I started off with this, um, which is a Cassia grain. Um, it's a Cerulon Nexstar 4 SE, and the 4 denotes that it's the same as having a, um, a, a telescope with a 4-inch mirror. Now, how do mirrors work? Basically, what they do is they gather light, which then is transferred to a lens, which you put on the top of the uh, telescope. So if I grab a, um, a lens out of here, you can have a lens here on top of your telescope here and you look through there and the light comes in at this end, goes through and in fact this uh, telescope is a sort of halfway house between what we call a Newtonian telescope. These are the big long telescopes where you look in there uh, at the side and then you can see uh, the image upside down as it comes out and the refractor ones which look more like the pirate telescopes this one's a bit of both and it sort of cheats by bouncing the light up and down through apertures and mirrors which magnify the image and then they go through the eyepiece at the top but the good thing is that these are really low maintenance you don't have to calibrate them when I do a further video showing you my Newtonian telescope, you'll see that they are much more complicated, although that one is nearly as tall as me and uh, nearly as wide, basically. So this one's a uh, 4-inch uh, telescope. It's about the bottom end, really. If you get any smaller than that, you can't see very much, but it's very good at getting images of planets within the solar system. Um, and also for uh, tracking the moon. Now this is an interesting one because this is a, a good be beginner's telescope because it's got quite a sturdy um, tripod here. But the other thing that's good about it is it's got a little um, uh, red dot pointer scope here. So you can uh, line the, the red dot up with something you want to look at in the night sky and then you can uh, spin your telescope round to uh, it spins the telescope round to point at it, and then you can see the image through the eyepiece. So I'm just going to turn it round because this one's got an interesting feature, which is really good for amateur photog uh, amateur astrophotographers and um, for people who are new to astronomy. This is a go-to mount, which means that you get this little um, remote here. Now this allows you, this stores 10,000 um, objects, stars, planets and um, galaxies and nebulae and basically what you do is you first of all line this up with three stars um, that it tells you uh, it tells you to point at three stars. You don't even have to know what they are. So you just go out in your backyard. It'll say line up with the first star, and you 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 line it up, and then it says point to another star. Um, and it's best to get them spread about. So I take one that's sort of north, one that's south, and a bit up, and then one that's say southeast or or east or something like that. 
Um, it also asks you for the time of day. You've got to know your longitude and latitude and get that from Google Maps or for some GPS. And then you put all that information in and then when you press it, if you get your time zones right, it will actually lock on and enable you to then just select stars, um, solar system objects or deep sky and you just scroll through the little menu that comes up here and you can literally um, say right I want to if, if Mars or the moon or Saturn is within um, your area of observation you can just select it here press it and the uh, and the actual telescope will uh, skew round to see it. Now, because I'm indoors, I can't really show you that, but what I can do is show you how it all sort of plugs in, and, and I can show you a bit of how the motor goes. So what I did was I got one of these from Halfords. It's the good old um, jump leads for a car. It's, it's for um, starting up a dead uh, battery on a car, but you can do that by getting a cigarette lighter fitment here and plugging it in as you normally would to the power and then you can power up your scope by just fitting it to the actual place here so you just place it in there uh, make sure that it's on okay and you can see that it lights up and it's asking me to uh, it's verifying it here and it's asking me to begin uh, alignment but I would then go through the menu here it would ask me to what type of alignment I wanted and like I say you can have three star automatic alignment where you don't need to know the stars you can point it um, you could do a one planetary or solar object alignment so I could say point it in the middle of the moon and just say track that and it will so that's really good uh, or I can point at some object like Jupiter or Saturn that I can see with the naked eye if I can recognize it and I can say uh, point at that. So it could do one, two or three star uh, alignment. Three star is better because if you know any um, triangulation in map reading it's much better to, to uh, pick up an object in three dimensions if um, basically you have three points. So this telescope like I said you can skew it round, I've just put it within shot here so you can see it and once you've got it all set up it does this automatically, you could actually tell it to go and look at a, uh, a planet and it will skew up or down itself so it's a nice little device, you see I'm doing this by hand so you can actually operate it manually to look at it but it's always good because what this does is it keeps track with any planet so as the earth rotates round so that rotates round and if it's tilting down it will automatically move into position so this is really nice now in addition to this you know you've got you've got a little more um, uh, you can do with this um, you can control this from your computer as well so all you need to do that is at the bottom of this remote here you have a little port you can't really see that and it's like a little port there and you can get a lead it looks like one of those phone jacks and you can um, place it in there you can buy these from any uh, astro photography or uh, sorry the uh, telescope store or online um, and basically I'm just going to untangle this at the ball two seconds so you can plug this in here and then it can it will then plug in via USB to your computer and then you can run the right software and then you get a version of this on your computer and you can then uh, track it and you get all sorts of um, uh, software which has a complete um, like a planetarium dome view of the earth and you can skew around on your laptop point and click with your mouse and then it will go and point at that star so it's um, absolutely fantastic so as I said you you just can use it as a normal telescope by just um, pointing it at what the object that you want to look at in the night sky um, so I can fit say a um, eyepiece here just grab that out fit in an eyepiece there take off the cap and then if I want to observe something in the night sky I just look through there 
and then you can actually see an object you're looking at and you can get different size um, uh, lenses um, here's another one here you can see that this one's a uh, telescopic one it moves um, up and down um, so that can go in there as well you can take this one out put it in there and it allows you to zoom in uh, to an object by looking down on there now if you want to get really close up so I, if I go and look at the moon with that I might be able to in its lowest setting this one goes from about um, it goes from about uh, 8 millimeters all the way up to 24 but if I have it um, right uh, down basically I can look in more detail at the moon but you can add to the focal length of your actual um, telescope by adding what is called uh, a two times barlow this is just it looks like a tube with a bit of glass in it at this end but by placing it between your telescope and your lens you can actually zoom right in further so you can get some nice views of craters on the moon with this you can come out really quite close in as though you actually can see the dustbin lids of the houses of the clangers if you um, if you use one of these so it's quite good even with this telescope it's very good at looking um, at the moon um, and also I've used this on Saturn and Jupiter and you can get some uh, nice coloration um, on uh, Jupiter if you've got it really if it's quite close in um, and you can see uh, Saturn's rings although it's quite small but you can actually distinguish the rings um, if you, you use such equipment as this so you can get all sorts of size lenses for these um, you've got to look after them because these are the bits that are really going to make a difference now when I show you my larger telescope in another video you'll see that these are pretty small compared um, with the equipment for my larger 12 inch mirror uh, telescope much different technology as well so that's how I do that now um, on to the last bit of the video and that's the astrophotography bit um, so you've got to somehow and I, I got one of these this is a um, Canon uh, 1100d it was quite a, a cheap camera at the time this this actual telescope here cost about um, 449 pounds if you were to buy it now um, and you can add even a, a, a Wi-Fi feature to it instead of having all these cables around but it wasn't available when I got it so I'd have to put in optional extras on it to make it do those sort of things and it can be quite expensive so basically um, that's what I did but I also bought a camera that's worth about three or four hundred pounds you can't just buy any camera with astrophotography not even a, a good um, DSLR um, because you, they need to be astro um, rated that means you need to go to a website and find out the best beginners intermediate and expert cameras to do this uh, the one that I'm videoing on is a really good camera that's a Canon uh, 77D and I use that with other equipment I'll show you in another video to get really good shots of nebula um, and you can get colour and galaxies but this one's really good for moon planetary and I've taken some good shots of the Orion Nebula with this as well um, so basically you don't need the lensy bit that goes on the top front of these cameras so they come with uh, sort of stock lenses like this but you don't need them when you're using it with a telescope because all you need is an adapter like this and all it is is it's going to fit on a telescope it's just a hollow adapter you just place it on to your telescope oh, sorry your uh, camera okay you just spin that round until it fits on and there it is it goes on there and then on this one you unscrew the back part here so the uh, telescope and you just uh, use the uh, the threaded ring at the back just to place on your camera now I would put it on more secure than this but that sort of gives you a general idea of what you're going to do and you just switch this device here which flicks down a prismatic mirror and therefore what if I switch this on now it would then look through the telescope um, and be able to take pictures 
Now this in combination with the uh, GO telescope will allow you to track the moon and to take video and shots of it or to home in on some other star or deep space object. But you're going, you've, it's all down to how much light you can gather. That's the real trick here. So you really need um, for really good shots, really good lenses uh, for your camera and some sort of um, mount which uh, compensates for the rotation of the earth or you need a really good telescope. Now this one is not brilliant for deep space objects or even for stars to get any real details out so but it is quite good for planetary ones so I cut my teeth on this one and it allowed me to learn a lot of how to use this camera on manual because you have to do that and I'll show you that in a subsequent video but this equipment here if you want to use it and even this can be you can stick cables into the side here USB lead here and you can remote the camera also from your computer so you can control the go-to you can control the image that you're seeing on your laptop um, which means it's all wired this one which means that you can actually um, see what you're going to be shooting and you can make some decent videos of the uh, moon and planets doing that but again um, you, you have to play around with it an awful lot and you get to know how to uh, use the, um, the camera. So what I hope to show you um, when in the next part of this video when I go outside is I want to show you how this is set up outside and also the um, type of shots in the third part of the video that you can get from a telescope such as this. So this is very beginner. So price for all this, um, you can get a, a battery pack for about £30. You can get this telescope for about 430 so it's about £500 for the telescope and the battery pack and the leads and that. And then you've got about, you only need the body of the camera and an adapter. This adapter ring, I think it cost me about 20 to £30 for the adapter ring. You've got to get one for the specific camera. This one's a Canon fit. And then I got the camera itself for three or four hundred pounds at a bit an, an entry level astro dslr camera okay um, in subsequent videos i'm going to show you how i've really upped my game when it comes to astrophotography i've got a telescope that's worth uh, well over a thousand pounds and also i've got a, a mount and a uh, what is called a Skywatcher Adventurer, which is a piece of equipment that tracks the rotation of the Earth. That's worth, um, I think, about uh, four or five hundred pounds. And then a camera which is worth about uh, seven to eight hundred pounds with various high-powered lenses, which are worth hundreds of pounds as well, which all together can get you much better shots but i haven't thrown this stuff away i can go out now with my really expensive kit and i'll have this set up to be pointing at the moon and i can get as good shots with this in the moon as i can with the larger things it's just that this is not good at deep space objects or the stars okay so that's the first part of the video over